Biological Weapons Convention is the first international treaty to ban a whole category of weapons of mass destruction, and as such, it's a very important component in U.S. national security strategy, and indeed the strategy of, of all the 170 parties to the treaty. What it does is it effectively prohibits uh, the development, production, manufacturing, stockpiling, acquisition of, of biological weapons. So the meeting of experts is one of two meetings that takes place um, every year as part of this so-called intercessional process. So it's, it's just an incredibly valuable opportunity uh, for scientists, uh, health uh, officials, multilateral officials, national governments, law enforcement, uh, to combine their collective knowledge and practices and best practices in these areas to come up with uh, systems of cooperation and coordination that will enable us to ideally prevent uh, a bioweapons attack. So uh, the Biological Weapons Convention is an arms control treaty, but it's important to realize that it's also a non-proliferation treaty. It's a very interesting treaty in that um, actors, um, experts uh, that you would never think of being involved um, in the implementation of this treaty are. So for example, why are customs officials involved with the implementation of this treaty? They are responsible for ensuring that what comes across their border, going in or going out, is legitimate and would not be used, for example, to produce or manufacture biological weapons. Advances in science and technology, particularly in the health fields, uh, are occurring at such a rapid rate uh, that they not only provide new opportunities for preventing and curing diseases, they also unfortunately uh, provide potential for abuse of, of these technologies uh, in the bioweapons field, for example. And so it's very important that uh, experts from countries, uh, both in policy areas and technical areas, and from a broad array of, of agencies uh, meet uh, regularly to exchange information and ideas about how to address these technology challenges. Convention is there to prohibit the use of biological agents or disease as a method of warfare or as weapons. But I also believe there is a great potential in this convention to help the world to also combat natural disease. So by the Increasing health capabilities all over the world uh, in natu against natural disease, uh, the rest will, will follow. And every year there's something that happens that may be of relevance and interest. For example, this year's uh, latest outbreak of the influenza virus in China. I think it was one of the most interesting parts of the meeting when we heard from the World Health Organization, from the Chinese delegation and from the American delegation uh, how they uh, managed the situation, how they managed to cooperate through international cooperation uh, to contain the disease and uh, to make sure that it would not spread and would not kill more people. It's not about the focus of the meeting, but it is, it is about the people or the experts who participate in this meeting. Education and awareness raising is the key. The mini-university concept uh, grew out of the idea that uh, diplomats are rather busy people, so they don't have the time really to find out about science and technology issues. For example, the notion of molecular epidemiology may come up in the context of the BWC, um, but many diplomats may not know what that is. So what we tried to do was to explain how one can use uh, 
genome sequencing of microorganisms to actually trace the path of an outbreak and sometimes even determine its origins. The most important thing is the, the continuous examination and exchange of views on the functioning of the treaty. This is all about expressing the ownership, the responsibility, the general responsibility for the implementation of the Convention, for the purposes and the fundamental goal that, lays, that is laid out in the Convention, and that is to have a word free of biological weapons.